I started dancing in Berkeley, California. Washington, D.C. In DC. Dallas, Texas. Brazil. Um, at age of eight. More or less around the house. Somewhere around eight or nine at my church. My mom and a couple of my aunts were a part of a liturgical dance ministry My mom there. used to dance back in Trinidad. One day I was watching uh, the musical Annie and my mother came out and was just doing some steps and she used to be a modern dancer herself. And so when I saw her dancing around, it was kind of one of those aha moments. So when we moved to America, we moved to Queens and she decided to put me in ballet because that's what she used to do. By accident, actually. I was intending on taking a tap class at an after school program and it was a ballet class. And at first I was like, oh no, I don't want to do ballet. I'm looking for another room. And so the teacher, a was beautiful, beautiful woman, was saying, oh, you should stay and, and just hang out for a while. And she ended up being one of my mentors. Just completely fell in love with everything, her dancing, her personality. She was kind of like a second mother to I me. I think that the spirit that um, Miss Smith, her name is Thurl Smith, had about dancing was... Um, really what captured me more than the dance itself. She has this overflowing sense of generosity that she uses ballet to express. She's still teaching now, she's 94. I think what I got about ballet as a young person was that you are able to take something that is tremendously impossible and through your own will and passion and desire create something in yourself that is not Im immediately there. People think about ballet as this, this fairies and light and skippity dippity but you know, it, it, is, it is so incredibly difficult and it is so searing in terms of how it shapes you and your relationship to the world that that, um, that kind of challenge, I think it's a gift to have to address it. I've always had a very strong love for classicism. However, I figured that I wouldn't have been yes. I was really just yes. had the aesthetic. You know, growing up, there just weren't that many role models because there just were no blacks in ballet in, in the U.S. at that point. I, I just knew that I had to be a ballet dancer, though, so I, I made sure that I ended up in New York where I could get a chance to do something more. And uh, someone said to me, uh, Arthur Mitchell's teaching ballet classes up in Harlem on Saturdays. Why don't you go? Because I'd been telling them how much I missed my ballet class. And uh, I came up here uh, and found out that he was forming a company and um, had to convince my parents to say uh, that I could drop out of college and go dance in the basement of a church in Harlem with a company that hadn't even been formed yet. But uh, I guess I was persuasive enough because we made an agreement. And I did. I remember my first ballet teacher back home in Maryland, Miss Betty Webster, always telling me about Arthur Mitchell and the Dance Theater of Harlem. She, you know, she, it was a big dream of hers, actually, for me to come here as well. For me, something just clicked <laughs> right when I stepped in the building. I don't know if it was Mr. Mitchell or the people. It was just, I felt like I found my home. It always has been a very special place. You know, from those early days when we were just a very, very small company and each and every one of us were finally in a place where we could do what we loved most. Not to say that there's not ambition here, but in the end you are supported by this common sense of, of connection that you have. They always tell us this before we go into where we represent something much larger than ourselves. And it really, really is something much bigger than myself or, you know, any of the other dancers in the ensemble. You know, I think we have this idea of ballet being, you get born into it. You know, that, that you look for somebody who is that gifted artist that seemed to descend from the gods. And I think that we are, we are those gifted artists. You don't have to be born into something. You can create something of yourself. And that's, that's in ballet and that's in everything else. I really look at her as like a role model, like after so many years I would like to be more more refined like Virginia Johnson, more well spoken like Virginia and to really set another standard. When she got here she made me I can't really describe it, but I felt like my 
bud, I guess, kind of blossomed, and it's still growing. This is what those years before were, so that I could do these years now, so that I can then pass it on to the next person to do that. I feel like this is right, and it's a, a strange, strange thing, because it's a really, really brutally difficult position to be in. But at the same time, this is what I've always wanted to do. I think about that. I, I think about uh, how he must have had the same feeling. And I also think about how stupid I was. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, it's, it is a very funny thing, and I talk to him about that, actually. I, I, you know, I say, wow, you know, I didn't ever really realize what you were talking about when I was in the middle of it. And now I do, and, and now it's their turn. Mm -hmm.